Hey, Watford followers, Randy Harden here, president of the Wisconsin ATV UTV Association. Welcome uh, to our filming here of uh, Saturday, 11 2018, with our Trail Tales TV. Uh, it's been a couple years since we've uh, last done this. We're really anxious to get it going again. So, this is kind of our maiden voyage out of the shoot, if you will. So, we have our Trail Tales magazine which comes out quarterly part of the membership for being a member in the the organization but we wanted to also ramp up our uh, uh, platform here so we can get news out and information out and communicate with the members and potential members and our our uh, constituents in a different way as we keep up with uh, things going on in the in the uh, fast-paced society that we live in so I thought we would start tonight, we're going to do a little bit of a, I wanted to do a recap a little more about what WATFA is, who we represent. When I say WATFA, it's short for Wisconsin ATV, UTV Association. Used to be for many years, just Wisconsin ATV. That's why WATFA fits in there. But we also want to uh, really stress of about a recent Facebook post that we just put out earlier this week uh, about next week, uh, November 28th, up in the Antigo area, where we could really use some some folks to come join us, if at all possible. I know it's during the week, and I'll talk more about that, but that'll be the two things we'll talk about uh, this evening uh, and in this report. So getting back to a question that we feel fairly often, who is the Wisconsin ATV Association, UTV Association? Who do we represent? Um and of course, as time evolves and our organization keeps up with the changes that are happening out in the uh, ATV and UTV world, uh, somewhat of our representation changes as well to go along with it. So back in the mid 80s, when our what they call a registration program uh, started, and what that means is we pay our, our fee. That's what uh, pays for our trail systems and our program. Uh, back in the mid 1980s, we really at that time, we're predominantly three-wheelers. In fact, we were all three-wheelers. So when you said ATV, it was a three-wheeled balloon tire uh, vehicle that uh, really had taken off uh, at a fairly uh, slow pace in the early 1980s, and then it started picking up in speed as far as popularity. So the organization then uh, got its feet wet, wheels wet, what do we want to call it? We got, we got lawmakers to kind of mimic what the snowmobile program, registration program was, and off we were going. And uh, time went on in 1988. You may remember uh, the thing called the Federal Consent Decree. It was when the federal government stepped in and said, look, kids are riding full-size three-wheelers, they're getting hurt, there's no laws, there's no rules in many of the locations around the country. And that really changed the organization when the four-wheel traditional ATV, the straddle seat, swing your leg over, handlebar, gripping uh, ATV became the predominant vehicle in 1988 and moving forward. So there were some three-wheelers around yet. In fact, there's still a few three-wheelers around as we come up on winter. I know I see a lot of them out on the ice when they pull shanties out there, but predominantly it's it was the uh, four-wheel ATV that progressed with all the different uh, makeup of those. So now let's fast forward as uh, that ATV um, became, in many cases, the more popular vehicle that is now on the scene is the side-by-side -side or the UTV, utili tr uh, Utility Terrain Vehicle. By the way, on a side note, I hear some weird acronyms for UTV once in a while. Don't know if you have. I see some articles and it's called the Utility Task Vehicle. I'm not sure where that came from. But utility train vehicle uh, is, is uh, one of the predominant uh, words that we use are UTV, but again, many of you might say side by side. So we still do represent those three wheelers that are out there. We have a lot of traditional four wheelers and the new kid on the block, so to speak, that has really taken the, the numbers uh, in growth are the side by side UTVs. So that's really our, our owners that we represent those kinds of machines. We have a lot of families um, 
that are out there when you join the organization. We used to have singles. We used to have families. It just got too complex. So we just have a family organization or a category for membership. And then we have clubs. Our local clubs really were over 100 strong now. When we first started uh, making this thing go, we didn't have 10 clubs to uh, start around the state. Many are still there. Many have morphed into different names. Uh, many of those clubs are now becoming uh, snowmobile ATV clubs, what we call a dual use club. So our clubs, and then uh, sometimes countywide or several countywide, we have what's called an alliance. But that's really kind of the the organizational flow chart is clubs and alliances. And then of course we also represent businesses through our dealerships. Uh, really, one of our key areas where we get information to and from is our dealerships. And then the other category is what we call associated businesses. So that might be a hotel, a gas station, a campground, restaurant, uh, any kind of business that is other than a dealership. So families, clubs and or alliances, dealerships, and associated businesses. That's really our main four categories as we like to think of it. So I put a box around all these things, uh, these categories. It helps us maybe uh, understand the organization a bit more. Then, of course, who our partners are. And when I mentioned that we went to lawmakers as an organization, uh, my predecessors, in the 1980s, we really asked the lawmakers to have the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, the DNR, administer the program like it does a snowmobile program. So we partner a lot with our Wisconsin DNR large agency. It's got many different bureaus. Uh, we do a lot of work with our Bureau of Law Enforcement, Community of Financial Assistance, uh, State Parks and Trails, Forestry. So there's many parts of that, but the Wisconsin DNR is certainly a major player that we, we uh, have a lot of interaction with. Our Wisconsin Department of Tourism over the last uh, several years has really become uh, a partnering agency with us as they've joined uh, with us to get the word out to the rest of the of the Midwest and the country about what a great trail network that we have here in Wisconsin. So they help promote us uh, to others and it helps our businesses. And then the equip, what we call OEMs, or Original Equipment Manufacturers, uh, we partner with them in many different things. Uh, we do a fair amount with, uh, I'll mention some names right now, uh, Polaris, uh, Yamaha, and Kawasaki have been pretty close with us, getting us uh, different ways that they can help us. At one time, we had some, and hopefully we uh, have some interactions with American Honda and uh, Can-Am at one time. We'd like to, to also get Arctic Cat, the new Textron, back into the fold. But the original equipment manufacturers are really one of our, our key players that we have to work with. And municipalities is our next. I mentioned Wisconsin DNR, tourism, state agencies, but we work with a lot of towns, villages, cities, and then we move over to counties, doing a lot of work with the counties as well. So the, the last one of those would jump over the state, and when I say jump over, meaning federal. So we have federal agencies like the U.S. Forest Service where we have trail systems, uh, again, the majority of our work is with DNR on a state level. Then we have all the local municipalities from county on down to, to, to uh, the smallest uh, towns. And then, of course, of late in the last several years, we've uh, been working and interacting with our Wisconsin Department of Transportation, a lot of road routes. So those are our main partners. We, by no means all of the partners, but the ones that are organization, our leadership team, we call it, uh, interact with a lot. So from there, I always like to explain to folks that at the beginning, I mentioned our, our evolution, if you will, as our organization has matured. Originally, when we first started in the mid-80s, our goal was to get ATV trails. And uh, at the time in legislation, the lawmakers, we'd ask them to put in some what we call road routes to get over all the bodies of water, rivers, uh, stream crossings, then into towns to some of the services that we need from gas stations to restaurants to hotels. That was the original uh, intent of the program. 
Then, of course, when the ATV changed, you know, from the three-wheeler to the four-wheeler, and then now the side-by-side, -side, the UTV, uh, we sometimes have to categorize those because the uses are different in some cases and in some instances. So we have to consider those uh, factors when we talk about ATV or UTV. It's kind of a subcategory within the category. So original traditional use, then the UTV side-by-side -side came into play, and then our probably most underserved group or category that we're really trying to get a better handle on is our wintertime use. We're coming into winter right now as I'm recording this or streaming this. Uh, but we have about 4,000 miles of shared winter trails. It's not publicized well as far as uh, where they are as far as those trails. But, of course, if there's snow, no snow cover, then we got those issues to go through. But winter use is the third category. And the fourth category that's really become uh, a large segment of activity, that's how I'm going to say that, are our road routes. Uh, so we have our trail systems that interact with our trails, our route systems. And in some places now we have all route systems with no trails or trying to get trails. In the old days, I guess when we started, we had some routes, I'm sorry, some trails, and then we would get routes to connect the different services. And in the southern part of the state, where it's really hard to get trail systems, uh, we'll start with routes with the ideas of trying to get some trails to hook up, and that is starting to work. So the original use, summer use, if you will, spring, summer, fall, that's what we call summer use. Then the ATV morphed into the side-by-side, -side, so that's our second category. Winter use is our third category that we're working on and uh, trying to, to be more prominent in, and then road route issues in uh, the road routes themselves are the fourth category. So that's kind of a synopsis um, that I thought would be helpful when a person kind of thinks about all the things that we do as our clubs are really our, our key folks on the ground, our local clubs. We have over 100, as I mentioned before, and they're interacting, and we help them where we can and where we're asked uh, the state organization ourselves, we do a lot of work in Madison with our uh, Department of Tourism, with our DNR, with our state lawmakers. Um, and then again, we assist our clubs on county levels, town, city, village, wherever there is there is request. And then the other part, uh, club startup. And this is a good time to mention uh, a little later this in December, I think it's the 12th, we just put out. It's on our Watfa Facebook page. Uh, there's a new club startup in Belgium, Wisconsin, down in uh, south of Sheboygan here in, um, I think that's Ozaki County. Um, and anytime we get new club startups, we really, our regional coordinators are called, are there to help. Our home office is there to help get that started so you don't have to rethink all the questions. So that's a good part of what we do to help stimulate more new clubs. And speaking of clubs and how it works regionally, I guess this would be as good a time as any to transition into the second part of our message for uh, this, this uh, episode. And that's up in Antigo in Langlade County. So Antigo is the county seat. Um, Langlade County has a, has a good number of trails. It hooks up with um, surrounding counties, Oneida County. It hooks up uh, with Lincoln County. So those three county systems are all interconnected. The club up in um, Langley County are clubs. There's quite a number of clubs, plural, that have really come about and became uh, more active and aware of trying to get those interconnections, which has really helped. But there's a, I guess we'd call it a, a bottleneck, and that's over in the White Lake area as you head over to Oconto County, which is another big uh, system that many people, you know, know about. Um, so there's the Wolf River, which is a, um, a prominent uh, river there in the White Lake area in Langley County. And the goal for, gosh, 12, 13, 14 years has been trying to figure out how to get over to the White Lake area because there was uh, some waterways, some fishery areas that we just 
couldn't get through because of some federal um, roadblocks, trail blocks, whatever we want to call them, with how the land use was was uh, there. So the clubs in the area have really worked hard. We've, you know, they've asked us to be uh, involved through the years and meeting after meeting after meeting, it seems. And finally, between all the clubs in that region, again, in the surrounding counties as well, uh, kind of everybody put their head together and planned out a way to, to ask the Wisconsin DNR for a quarter mile of trail on a, on a DNR property up there so they could move the, both the snowmobile and the ATV trail because the snowmobiles at this, at this uh, area were going across a, a DOT highway uh, 64 bridge that's fairly narrow. And we wanted to use that bridge, but again, a lot of traffic up there. So we said, you know, if we built a recreational bridge, if you've ever heard of a recreational bridge, it's kind of as the name implies, it's for recreational use, not vehicle traffic. Um, we could work with the snowmobile club. They, they did agree that it would make more sense if they could move their river crossing off the highway bridge and over to a recreational bridge. And at the same time, our ATV community could use that in the summertime and get across this bridge. Um, there's a lot of activity on that Wolf River, no doubt. There's a lot of kayaking and fishing and things that happen, but it's a bridge over the water. So I guess to draw this out, many years of figuring out how to make this work, finally came to a really good conclusion if we could get the Wisconsin DNR to allow us this quarter mile of trail on state property. Went through a lot of the work to uh, get that done through the local efforts and our state organization we presented what they call the Natural Resources Board, which is a citizens group that have, that approves these kinds of things. Unanimously approved it this past uh, fall up in the Hayward area. They had the meeting. Uh, there was some contention because there's some folks that are not motorized enthusiasts that are somehow equating that crossing that Wolf River on that recreational bridge is somehow going to harm the environment. Again, it's a bridge that doesn't touch, touch the water. It goes over it, just like in all the cars and trucks that go over the Highway 64 bridge that we're going to be next to. This is just taking our ATVs in the summer and UTVs, uh, of course, snowmobiles in the winter. Now, there's a lot of activity there for folks that are out canoeing that river, and there's even a, a, uh, a big event up there in the summer where our motorized community always is willing to share our, uh, in this case, bridge with other folks that want to use it. So certainly there's no issue with other folks not crossing the bridge as they're walking across that auto, you know, on Highway 64 where all the traffic is, using the rec bridge, even though they wouldn't be contributing any dollars. But our snowmobile program and our ATV, UTV program has applied for a grant after we got the permission from DNR to use that quarter mile of trail. Both programs saw the benefit of it. They split the cost of that bridge. Uh, it's, a, it's about a half a million dollars in each program, as I understand it. And that includes some engineering costs. Uh, so that in itself was the second major hurdle to get those grants submitted and approved through both councils. There's a citizen advisory group uh, on the snow side, and there's also a citizen advisory group, group on the ATV, UTV side. All came together and said, this makes perfect sense. So the county now has the grants approved. The DNR has approved moving that trail. And now we're getting a, some pushback from a few of the county board members, and especially in this one committee, that really are just opposed to it in general, just because it's got motors on it, I guess. I can't tell you for sure. There's all kinds of different reasons I hear, none of them which really, for our line of thinking, make any sense. But there's some objection now. We get this far where we're saying, what if we change our mind after the grant's approved and we just don't want to uh, put that bridge in? Well, the cost of that engineering study comes into play. They said, hey, if, if for some reason the DOT says, hey, after the engineering study, for whatever reason, you can't put it in, the county would not have to pay that money back for that engineering study that came from our ATV program and, our, and the snow program. But if they just change their mind, so that's what they're objecting to. If they just change their mind, they don't want to be liable for this engineering study. 
So why would you even change your mind if you come this far and you've seen that really there's really uh, no logical reason why that bridge wouldn't make sense to put in? So that is what's happening. That committee, subcommittee of the county board members, there's I think five or six, I think five county board members on that subcommittee meeting this coming Wednesday, November 28th, 2018, up in Antigo at the fairgrounds. Uh, it's called the Multipurpose Room. Uh, jump on further in another post on our Watford Facebook page, but it, the county fairgrounds are right on the main highway there, the main drag through town. There's a map. Uh, you'll see it's a really nice building. We've been in there many times. But we're really asking as many people as we can to come up and show support to the local clubs. They're going to be making this, this last pitch as to why the county wouldn't accept the money. It costs the county nothing. Um, I realize it's during the week, and so work is an issue, obviously. But if you could spare that day, it would sure be beneficial. That meeting starts at 1 o'clock. So we're asking people to get there around 1230 if you could. Uh, wear your club gear, your Watt gear, whatever. If you want to bring a trailer with a machine on it, that's fine in the parking lot. But if you could come just to show numbers about the few count, the few county members. There's some really good county members up in in uh, Langley County as well. But just impress upon them how much we need this connection. It would really be beneficial to our clubs. I really plead with you if you could um, to to do that. So I'm uh, just going to be looking here now. That's the main thing here. Uh, I'm just reading something from our one of our viewers. Uh, we're happy to share existing trails in our area with horseback riders, walking groups. Uh, Jeff mentions over in the uh, western part of the state. And as Jeff says, it's worked well. And, and they're, they're the proof. The uh, Chippewa County ATV Club has been around almost as long as Watfa has. In fact, maybe even longer. The local club started. But there's proof. And we rode a trail extension this past summer, I might add, over there in Chippewa County. And it does intersect with the uh, other Ice Age Trail and the Equine Trail. So certainly it does work. And that's some of the message we want to give. On our other Facebook posts, we have really the talking points. If anybody asks you, we hope to have media there uh, this coming Wednesday and why we want <clears throat> so many people, because there may be folks showing up that are against this project. And it's uh, important to us to at least show support in numbers by way of physical presence. So I appreciate that. Uh, Jeff, for mentioning that, uh, your living proof and that club over there, all that the club does there. And there's other places around the state that we ride and intersect uh, with, uh, in fact, right there in Langley County, it intersects with Ice Age Trail in several places. And it does work. It does uh, work there as well. Um, so that's really the, the plea, if you will. I cannot tell you how hard these local clubs have been battling this. In some instances, bias. It's just crazy how objection after objection after objection. You answer one and then they come back with another one. So that's why at a certain point in time, we just need numbers of people to join us. And that's, that's what we're asking you. We're going to be there as an organization to support the local clubs. Uh, so again, I know it's a hardship to get off on a Wednesday, uh, the 28th, but if you at all can, we'd really, really appreciate it. If you have any uh, questions, shoot us an email or hit us on Facebook before that time. Um, that's our, our main message. So throughout the, the rest of uh, the year here, we're going to try to get on a schedule to do a show ideally once a week. We try to pick, uh, in fact, we were going to do it on Thursday this week till we realized, oh, yeah, that's Thanksgiving. That probably won't work. That's why we're doing this on a Saturday. But we hope to have a little more entertainment, uh, some information, not dancing or singing type entertainment, but we'll have people from uh, regional coordinators we'd like to bring in and some guests, different guests, 
You can uh, even request different things that you want to see. Topics covered that we'll try and do it this way as well. But uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that we're in this together. So wherever and whenever we can work together as uh, supporting each other, that's really uh, an instrumental um, part of the, the maturity of our organization and our sport that we enjoy. So seeing if we have, I'm asking my producers if we have any more questions. I don't know that we do here. No. So again... Did you want to mention how the ORV funding process... I know you touched a little bit yeah. Formally that works. So one of the, we're talking here with uh, the director about, I talked about the grants on the snow side and on the ATV side, and I'll just stick with the ATV, UTV side because it's, it's similar to the snow side, but we don't represent the snow group. But all of us pay our registration dollars, uh, that 30 bucks for two years. So really think about it, 15 bucks a year. What can you get at McDonald's for 15 bucks? But 15 bucks a year, and then along with that that registration dollars, there's a percentage of state gas tax that is allocated over toward our ATV UTV fund, and those are the dollars that accumulate and pay for everything we do. We're self-funded as a as an organization. I mean, as a uh, user group. We fund ourselves. We we don't use any general revenue. It's all produced by our own means. So the organization, I'm sorry, the uh, program has seven uh, what we call off-road vehicle council members that are volunteers. Uh, they're all part of a organization. They go out and ride themselves. They see the trails. They they do a yeoman's job of taking all these grants, making recommendations, and they make the recommendation to our state DNR funders, if you will, the grant funds, as to where they recommend these dollars that we generate ourselves be spent. And so that's how this ORV Council, and again, the Snow Council has a similar organization. Um, so we, we generate our own money. We have uh, oversight by user group that goes back into it. So I think our program works really, really well. I see we got another uh, response. Um, so Tom's asking from from uh, Team Winnebago Land. Thanks, Tom, for going in. If you can't make it, will there be any need to send in a written memo? Actually, for this one, probably not at this point in time. Now, that may come after, but right now, this subcommittee, we're trying to get them to budge and make the recommendation to the full county board. If it gets to that point, then we may ask for written um, testimony or support in that way. But right now, we're just trying to get it from the subcommittee, if you will, to the main county board to accept it. So, yeah, Jeff also mentions about the economic impact that our our recreational, it used to be called it a sport, it's, we're an industry, uh, a major driver in the tourism industry. When you think about uh, we're approaching the, you know, it, it will be soon it will be a 400,000 strong number of registered ATVs and UTVs. Um, and when we all go on rides and we go into these small businesses and the travel that we do and that the state gas tax that we pay and the state income tax that we all pay, how many jobs that this industry supports, it's a huge driver. And I think a lot of people don't, maybe the folks that aren't supportive don't realize how big it is. Now, our organization and our clubs, we know we have to manage that responsibly. And we do that through our trail ambassador program or trail patrol program. We do that through our clubs. We do that through working with law enforcement and, and other organizations with rules and lawmakers and whatnot. But it's a huge impact that we, as a user group, have in a positive way on the tourism industry and the business of Wisconsin. So thanks for uh, mentioning that, Jeff. Um, so we will, uh, I guess, see if we have any more comments there. But the. Do you remember when we first thought about this project? 
Yeah, we're talking about that the other day. Uh, when this project first came up, we were trying to get on this, this abandoned railway is what it is. And getting from Lily down to White Lake, I know that if you're not from the area, that won't make sense. But there's this abandoned railway. But what we, we tried and tried and tried to get the feds. So Fish and Wildlife has a fisheries, a federally designated fisheries on both sides of that. And they absolutely said you cannot run that ATV trail down there. Even though, think about all the trains that, <laughs> when the tracks were in, were running down there. Seems like the trains would have significant impact if there's any. Certainly they don't. But here or there could not overcome that. So it's probably, I'm thinking 13 to 14 years ago is how long we've tried in different ways to work with local clubs and local people to get a solution to this so we can get those trail networks hooked up in a much more efficient way than they are now. Right now it's a real bottleneck, if you will. Um. We have uh, Tim from Shano, and I do appreciate that, Tim. He mentioned that he wished he could make it, but there's other commitments. We understand that. Uh, it's pretty short notice, but if uh, there's any way you can, we'd greatly appreciate it. Um, I know we had a number of years back, probably three to four years ago, we did a an all-points bulletin, if you will, up in Vilas County. And that meeting was in the evening time, so we really filled that that uh, building that evening. That was another 10- to 12-year battle, if you will, in some sense of the word. But Vivas County now is opening routes and trails everywhere, and we're just trying to get Langley, who already has trails, just get this connection made up so we can get the counties hooked up to help the tourism and help the rider experience. So we understand that, Tim. Thanks for uh, offering um, maybe there'll be a different time. Like I was telling uh, an answer to Tom, we'll see where this goes. We may have some actions after this. But all in all, things are going on well for in this industry, in this sport. Uh, our club numbers keep growing. Our activities keep growing. Uh, we just want to keep up with the the uh, growth of it, and that's what part of this is. Is that's a an area that we need to get uh, better travel through that part of Langley over to Oconto County. So I'm just looking at my producer to see if there's any other topics on this one. But again, uh, if you're not a member and would like to get this quarterly magazine, uh, jump online, uh, join uh, the Wisconsin ATV, at least as a family. You'll get four issues a year. You'll get our e-newsletter blast. You will, uh, in the spring issue, we're working on the winter issue is, is nearing completion. Our spring issue, we always put out a statewide planning map. It's not a navigation map, but it tells you where all the riding opportunities in the summer are. I uh, would also mention that, as I said earlier, we're working on winter, um, trying to, to make it a bit more uh, organized. But we're going to be doing a Team Winnebago Land winter workshop in December. Check out Team Winnebago Land's Facebook page. It's on our page as well. To be honest, I can't think of the date there. In, it's in a couple weeks. But uh, we had real good luck. I appreciate Team Winnebago Land uh, putting those workshops on. So that's it. I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. So let's uh, make this thing go. Hope to see a good number of you up there on Wednesday. If you can't make it, maybe ask your uh, friends or family, other folks, if they can make it. So we just need warm bodies up there in support of our locals. Um, so we'll catch out on the trail sometime soon. This is Randy Harden from the Wisconsin ATV UTV Association.